Hello again, this is Kevin Ring with a fun video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do keyframing on the Barco Event Master Toolset. Keyframing, of course, is the alteration of a parameter that occurs over time. Now, in a Barco Event Master Toolset, we're not a timeline based system, we are queue based, but we can still do keyframes in the sense of moves. Ooh, so flying pips. I'm going to show you how to do this in three different ways. The first way is going to be utilizing mixing layers. The second way will be utilizing single non-mixing layers. And the third way is my personal favorite, utilizing mixing layers and a different way of storing your presets. Pretty advanced, so we'll save that one for last. So I have built a destination with two output connectors. I've assigned zero layers right now, and I have four input sources coming into the system. Uh, right now I am on the simulator. I also have gone into my programming page and I've assigned thumbnails just so we can all play along and see what's going on at home. So first what I'm going to do, of course, is with um, mixing layers. So I'm going to go down to my destination contextual adjust tab and I'm going to assign a single link mixing layer. Great. So let me show you how this first methodology works. So to do this, let me move myself out of the way a little bit. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to add a layer to my programming page and preview. I'm going to take layer one with my camera one source. And I want to do a keyframe. So in my scenario of a keyframe, I want the window to fly from one side of the screen to the other one auto defined action point. So with the layer selected, I go to the contextual adjust tab up here at the top where we can change layer type from pip to key right below. I have this one section we haven't really covered called keyframing here add KF that stands for key frame. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe. This now gives me two elements here, a start and an end point. What I need to do now is I need to place my layer at a different position for the start and the end. Where do I want to start? Where do I want to end? Now, for those of you who know the advanced feature, I promise that's that's our third option here. So with start, I'm going to have my window start small and on the left hand side of my page. On the end, I'm going to have it move to the right hand side and get slightly larger. Here we go. Great. It's going to go off the screen, but that's OK. So now I see start end, start end. I can even preview the animation. So now I'm going to take this to screen. And now I want to use my keyframe as part of a queue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this arm button down below here. Arm, A-R-M, arm keyframe. Now I see this green raster highlighting, hey man, next time you press the all trends button, I'm going to move on screen for you. And there it is. I hit arm again. And there it is. I can control the rate of my keyframe. So if I want to go a little bit slower, I'm going to arm. Fantastic. Now you might see some odd behavior on the graphical user interface. It might jump, it might skip. Uh, I promise on the actual output as well as the multi-viewer, it's going to look really, really, really good. So the cool thing now is I can just go back and forth with this all I want. On a controller, there is an arm button as well. So when you're utilizing a controller, you can hit the arm button, all trans, and go back and forth. In addition, the act of arming a layer for a keyframe is stored in presets as well as user keys. So in my presets page, if I were to hit arm and I were to store this as a preset, now let me just go ahead and take that, I'll hit arm again, I'll take that. Now, if I were to recall my preset, it has the act of arming already built in. On user keys as well, you're going to notice that one of your options here is keyframe. So you can also store the parameters of a keyframe and its state in a user key. Cool. So that is one way of doing keyframes, utilizing mixing layers. The next one I'm going to show you is similar but different. <laughs> And this is going to be utilizing single non-mixing layers. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my adjust page and I'm just going to delete this layer. Now to do this next one, I'm going to use a single non-mixing layer. 
single non-mixing layer. If you haven't worked with single layers before, beware, you can create a conflict of resources. So this definitely is an advanced methodology. Make sure you understand layer management, layer priority, and everything else for that matter if you're going to be working in this workflow. So I'm going to go to my programming page. And this time around, here, let me just, I'm going to move myself out of the way for you so we can see what's going on. I'm going to go up here. <laughs> All right, cool. So let me just go ahead and delete all my presets. Cool. I'm going to bring in a layer onto my window. And this time around, I'm going to resize it. And now the order of operations is very important here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the wet layer and I'm going to save this as a preset. Now I'm going to move the layer, save it as a preset, move the layer, save it as a preset move the layer, save it as a preset. Now it's very important that you do not hit all trans at any point during this. I am purposely creating a conflict of resources here. But now what I can do is when I take it to screen, I'm going to create the conflict and I'm going to allow it to move on screen. Basically though, I've purposely created a conflict of resources saying, hey, this layer is already live. It cannot, use, uh, it cannot change source. So I have no choice but to move live on screen. Typically, this is actually a bad thing, but I am utilizing this in a fun way to create the appearance of a keyframe. It's not fun. Uh, so once again, if you do that, make sure that your layer management is very good. You don't want to accidentally be utilizing a mixing layer when it should be a single layer and everything else. The third method is complicated, but it's one of my personal favorites. It combines the workflows that we just did with using mixing layers, but then the simplicity and flexibility of the single layers. So I'm going to add a single link mixing layer and I'm going to go to my programming page. Now for this one, the order of operations is very important. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer to my programming window in the preview page. And now I'm going to go to the adjust tab and I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm going to have the start and end position be in the same location. I'm not going to move it. And now I'm going to add this as a preset. So I hit save from preview. And now I'm going to move the window to the other side. And now watch what I do. I'm going to hit delete keyframe. I'm going to add a new keyframe, set the start and end position to be the same. And now I'm going to store this as a preset. I'm going to move to one other location. I am going to delete the keyframe, add a keyframe, set the start and end position to be the same. I know, very weird. And I'm going to store this as a preset. Now at this point, I'm going to take them to screen. And that did not work at all. What did I not do right? Oh. I didn't arm it. <laughs> Easy fix. So I did not arm my presets. <laughs> uh, so watch what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go to my adjust tab. I'm going to delete the keyframe, add the keyframe, start in the end, arm the keyframe, save from preview. <laughs> that was my bad. That's very important. Now I'm going to move my layer. In fact, I'm not even going to edit the video. Normally I would. I would edit this mistake out to look like I'm perfect, but that's a common mistake. Add keyframe, start, end, arm the keyframe, preset, save for preview. And now I'm going to move it one more time. We'll delete the keyframe, add the keyframe, start, and end, arm keyframe, preset, save for preview. All right, now let's take a gander. And there we go. So once again, you're going to see a little bit of a glitch here, but that's perfectly fine. So the key on this one, though, of course, is on each preset, you must reset the layer by actually deleting the keyframe. It seems a little rudimentary, but you must delete the keyframe, then add it, then arm it, then store it. So the cool thing with this one, one, it uses mixing layers, so it doesn't mess up your programming too much. And then two, you can work it with the same way as the single layers. We have a preset for each location. So I have my left-hand side, and then I have my right hand side or smaller left, smaller right. Cool.
So those are three ways of building keyframes with the Event Master tool set. Uh, no one way is more right than the other way. Um, I personally will use any and all methods based on what my show is and my programming is. As always, these are just tools for your uh, bag of tricks. Um, I'm not teaching a workflow, just showing you some uh, fun, nifty tips and tricks. Uh, as always, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button and press like and uh, check me out for more fun tutorial videos. Thank you so much. Bye.